Hi, I'm Lexi Lewis with the Tampa Bay Black Heritage Festival. I'm here with Michael Cunningham, photographer, author. Michael, I understand you fell in love with photography at an early age. Walk me through the timeline, if you will, of how your passion for photography has modeled and molded your career thus far. Absolutely. Um, 12 years old was when I first got that bug to start taking photographs and, and documenting. I started out documenting my family. In fact, it was my, uh, an uncle of mine, uh, Ernie Pitt, who uh, bought me my first camera. And his only request was that I photograph everyone, and my brothers and sisters. And so I would go in the dark room and make these prints. And I just fell in love with photography. And at 12 years old, I actually said, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And so I just I went for it. And um, you know, I'm here standing because of that. Wow. And so you, you've gone on to uh, mm -hmm. teach photography. And tell me a little bit about that. I, um, I started a, a nonprofit, actually, uh, called Urban Shutterbugs mm -hmm. um, to teach photography to inner city youth between the ages of 10 and 12. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think that's a critical age uh, for uh, you know, determining who you're going to be somewhat. Uh, and I also instruct um, at uh, Boston University, has a film school I teach there. Um, that's one thing I like to do to give back, is, mm -hmm. is to develop the new um, uh, photographers coming up, the Wonderful. new generation. So, Wonderful. Yeah. Um, in your book, Crowns, Portraits of Black Women in Church Hats, um, your forward is by Maya Angelou. Mm -hmm. Tell me what her reaction was to your book and when you asked her to write the forward. She, uh, she knew the women, you know, um, like a lot of, uh, a lot of women. They, they, they can resonate with, you know, them as uh, grandmothers and aunts and sisters. So she knew the, the women and it was easy for her to write the forward because of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were thrilled that she said yes, and just is basically icing uh, on the cake uh, for this book that just really sets it up and puts you in the mood of, of who these women are and why they do the things they do. So, yes. wonderful. Talk to me about the Crown's exhibit. Mm -hmm. The exhibit is um, uh, a great display of uh, hat queens, and it's about 30 images uh, from the book. Uh, there are 50 portraits and 50 essays in the book. We take about 30 of those images and we put together an, an exhibition of uh, fine art, uh, black and white photography. Um, this exhibition has uh, their name and the, the quote uh, beside it. And uh, it just gives um, the viewers a chance to really see the detail of the hats. Mm -hmm. You know, I photographed in high resolution so you could see every, every uh, pin, every button, every feather. Um, that was important to me. And it, it's in black and white. A lot of people ask, you know, why this exhibit is in black and white and, and not color. And, and that's another book, you know, that's a book for someone else to do. But to me, black and white allowed you to view the image as, as a whole and together and not separate the hat from the woman. Yes. And it was important that, that there were, uh, that connection was made, that this is um, a part of them and it's not separate from them. And uh, so black and white, to me, it allows the, the viewer to reach deep inside the image mm -hmm. and, and really you know, pull that out. Now, Crowns is also a stage play. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about that. Absolutely. Um, the book has legs, actually. Uh, Regina Taylor, who's a, a famous and phenomenal playwright and actress, uh, adapted our book, um, originally uh, performed at Princeton University. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the play, she's a genius at how she uh, took the book uh, with 50 stories and weaved it around the story of one of the women in our book who is a, a young woman, uh, Yolanda, I believe, uh, is the character's name, who is sent down south mm -hmm. to uh, live with her grandmother. And of course, she's, uh, she doesn't want to go down south and, and uh, spend any time with these old women that sit around and wear hats to church. Mm -hmm. So she ends up getting this lesson uh, when she goes uh, down south about the importance of, of women and wearing hats and, uh, and and it's not that they just plop something on their head so and, and you're gonna see, you're gonna hear uh, a little bit of a lot of the stories from the book and like I, like I said she's just genius in how she weaved all those stories into one story mm -hmm. um, and so we're, we're very pleased with the play still uh, being produced it came out in 2003 mm -hmm. 
Uh, in 2005, it was uh, the number one produced play in the country, uh, musical. Uh, yeah, and it's still it's still being performed. People still love it. They still love the book. So I'm thankful thankful to be a part, connected to these women. Um, I'm glad that I was able to, sh to point my camera at these women. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just humbled about the, the whole experience. Great, great. Mm -hmm. So why do you think it's important to participate in events like this? Um, I think it's important because this is a part of history. Mm -hmm. And, of, you know, a lot of people say if you don't know your history, it's hard to know where you are and it's hard to know your future. So documenting these women, you know, and, and I love still photography because you can never go back to that moment again. Um, and I've, I've stopped this moment and, and that moment in time. And, and to be able to do that and give honor to these women and something that they love, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Great, great. Now, what does celebrating Dr. King's legacy mean to you? That means uh, getting up and, and going to work and actually making a difference and, and, and doing something to, whether it's better your community, better your school, uh, but but do something to make a difference and, and these women uh, what they did for me what they do for other other people uh, They make a difference and uh, and to me. That's what his legacy is just just to get up and do something and something positive Great. Yeah, great. Well, we here in Tampa. Thank you for coming and we're enjoying your uh, Work and we hope to see you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you for having me Hi, I'm Lexi Lewis with the Tampa Bay Black Heritage Festival, and I'm here with Sharon Thompson. Sharon has donated all of the beautiful hats that you have seen here at Hillsborough Community College. Sharon, how long have you been wearing all these hats? I've been wearing hats probably since I've been about 17 years old. And I picked up the habit from the church I attend because all the older ladies always dressed up so nice in hats. So every Sunday I have on a hat. Now is it just Sundays that you wear your hats or do you wear them otherwise? I wear them otherwise. Festivals, the, um, the fun fest. I had on a beautiful wide hat, you know, to keep the sun out of your face. Yeah, I love hats. <laughs> now, since you wear hats, do you have daughters and do they wear hats? Yes, I have one daughter. And I have a granddaughter that's eight years old. And of course, we do put her on hats occasionally. <laughs> yes. it's wonderful. Well, you know, your hats are so beautiful. And we thank you for the donation and allowing everyone to view what you have worn. It's very beautiful. So thank you very much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lexi Lewis with the Tampa Bay Black Heritage Festival. And today I'm here talking to Sharon Dale Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> hi. She, hi. She wears lots of hats, has lots of hats. Yes. Talk to me about why you wear hats. Well, I always tell people that comment on my hats that you can never have a bad hair day with a hat on. That's number one. And number two, it, a woman always looks so distinguished and so completely put together if she has a hat on whether it's a sport hat or a, a, a baseball cap or whatever, it always makes her stand out and she looks finished. Yes. And I, I think church hats, especially when I look around at the ladies here tonight, they just look so stunning. They, they do. really do. Every hat was different and every hat was gorgeous. Yes, they are very unique and beautiful. Yes. Now, how many hats do you own? Do you, have you ever counted them? No, but we just recently went through the, ha uh, the house cleaning up every room and uh, detailing every room and I would say at least 25 and uh, some of them are cowboy hats and some of them are church hats and some of them are just, you know, ordinary hats that you'd go put on just to run to the store. So I do like hats and I, I do like the way it makes me feel. Do you have a favorite hat? Yes, it's a cowboy hat. Uh, it's a felt hat that my husband bought me in Italy, and it's really cute, and it's, uh, in fact, Michael took a picture of me in Italy and put it on the cover of an album, and so it's my favorite hat. Wonderful. Yes. Well, thank you for your time, oh, and you're so welcome. keep wearing those hats. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I like yours, too. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lexi Lewis here at the Tampa Bay Black Heritage Festival, where we're celebrating hats with uh, Michael Cunningham, who just spoke, and I'm here with... Chloe Coney, who I understand is the hat lady. I am definitely the hat 
lady. And I tell every woman who don't wear hats, they need to wear hats so they can get a attitude, okay? Every woman needs a attitude. Miss Coney, how many hats do you own? I own over 300 hats. As you see in this picture they did of me in 2003, I brought probably about a hundred of my favorite hats and covered my sofa, my living room, with the hats. So as you see, I love hats. I wear a hat every day. I have winter hats, I have summer hats, I have everyday hats, I have my church hats. And by the way, I'm a first lady. My husband is a pastor, so of course I wear my hats. And then I wear them to work. I work for the congresswoman. And then I started a CDC, a nonprofit, and I wanted to stand out so everybody would know me. So they walk in the room and say, where's Chloe Coney? They say, oh, she's the lady over there with the hat. So it was a good marketing tool. Right, so you really are the hat lady. Now, tell me this. Where do you put 300 hats? I have hats all in everybody's bedroom. I have my winter hats all neatly placed in containers in one room. I have my summer hats in another one. And then I have my everyday hats. So when you love hats, you will find rooms for your hats. Now, now, out of 300 hats, I hate to ask if you have a favorite, but I'm gonna. Do you have favorite hats out of the 300? This is my favorite hat here. And I talk about that favorite hat. A dressy black one with feathers and rhinestones in there. Now that's really my church hat. I wear my do my Diana wave when I wear that hat, okay? Feel really special. Well, I thank you for the interview, Miss Coney, the hat lady. And uh, we'll see you around Tampa wearing a hat. <laughs> thank you.